All right, another project for the day. I uh, purchased this Bailey model SBR 1220. It's a small sort of hobbyist size combination metal shear bending brake and roller. And uh, in order to be effective I really need to bolt it down to something. It has mounting feet obviously. And uh, I don't really have a good space. I would thought originally to mount it to the workbench here but it would be too tight between my belt sander and my drill press and wouldn't allow me to do any outsized stuff on there. Anything that would hang over the drill press for example would hit the, the tool so um, <clears throat> I was thinking so people who have seen my basement workshop video know that I have uh, this bench here which is currently just storage for uh, beam clamps, pipe clamps, spring clamps, belt clamps, and my grinder and wire brush. And I was thinking the table looks substantial enough. If I bolt it up to this table behind the uh, grinder, I can find a new home for the pipe clamps easily enough, or even put them on the floor underneath. <clears throat> Problem is that this table up here isn't really quite big enough. And um, it's kind of an odd thing. It is just bolted up to the top of this. And uh, <clears throat> I think I can easily enough put a new tabletop on this that's a little bigger and thereby able to support the uh, overall combination of the new tool and the grinder. Unfortunately I was thinking that I stopped at the hardware store on the way home envisioning putting a new top on top of this top leaving the old one in place and just extending it out a little bit in all dimensions and thereby making a bigger top and I may still do that um, <clears throat> but I could also just bolt the a new board on top of this in place of the old top. That's also very doable. Um, <clears throat> I kind of hate to lose the uh, little scale that's on here, but really for that I could just bolt a cheap metal ruler on top of the new table and get pretty much the same thing because I do use that from time to time doing certain types of grinding. So uh, I think the first thing to do is get some plywood. So I've determined that the new tabletop size I need to accommodate the bench grinder and the new machine. For the new machine part it's going to be 22 inches wide and at least 16 inches deep and the bench grinder still going sideways needs 13 inches that adds up to 35 inches. So 35 inches by 16 inches is probably a good size for the tabletop. I was hoping I had some three-quarter inch plywood, but all I have is some leftover stuff that's roughly half an inch from uh, some of my other projects, like my um, <clears throat> cart for the um, the uh, copy attachment for my um, wood lathe, and also the uh, wood lathe chisel holder. Uh, so I have enough wood left over from that to make this. And so I've got a couple pieces cut out here <clears throat> of the same size. And I had been trying to get three quarters of an inch. These things are a bit less than the desired thickness or half the desired thickness. So it ends up being roughly seven-eighths of an inch, so slightly more than three-quarters of an inch, and that's fine. 
I think that tabletop will be more than adequate. I was a little worried that one thickness by itself might be just a little too floppy. So sort of on a whim I've decided to just throw a little glue between these layers. Can't hurt, probably isn't really necessary. They're going to be all bolted together. So I just threw a little wood glue on there and I'm going to put a few uh, drywall screws in just to hold it together temporarily. Easier than clamping it under these conditions. And there I've got it temporarily screwed together. So uh, I flipped it over so the excess screw length is sticking up and I just ran it along the uh, table saw to clean up the edges here uh, so they line up nice and flat all the way around. And now I've got some leftover wood from the uh, select pine that I use for so many of my projects. I'm going to make a nice edging along here so if I belly up to the table uh, I'm not going to get the rough edge of the plywood on there. I'm just going to put a facing on there like that. So I have to cut those out. And now I've got the edging around the sides. <coughs> the uh, plywood, because I was sawing it crosswise on my table saw with the wrong kind of blade, chipped out a little bit on the surface area. So just to smooth it out, I threw what I had left of two different tubes of wood filler on there. So when I give it a quick sanding, it'll look a little bit better. So I need to let this set up for a few hours. And now the glue is dried. I've given it a quick sanding. And uh, one coat of varnish is all it's going to get, probably. As usual, since it's below freezing outside, the basement's not all that warm. And I've got my usual reciprocating heater fans going. Okay, it's the next morning and the first coat of varnish is dried. I've given it a quick sanding. Now I have to figure out where the drill holes need to go for the T-nuts that I'm going to install. And I've figured out a good position for the machines. I'm just marking their uh, mounting holes now. And I flipped the table over and marked the outline of the smaller bench tabletop. And now I've got the table upended. My goal here is to drill through the metal frame and use that as the basic mounting. So it's not just through the medium density particle board that comprises the table. I don't want that to be the structural element entirely, so I'm going to go through the sheet metal here as well. So I'm going to mark the holes for that. And now I've got the pilot holes for the four holes going in to mount this table to the bench. Alright, my plan for mounting all this stuff. This is the original tabletop. This is the larger bed that I've just made. I'm going to put T-nuts on the new tabletop, countersunk so their flanges are uh, flush with the top surface. Probably use a Forstner bit for that. And then um, put bolts through from the bottom of the original tabletop into the T-nuts, thereby anchoring the whole thing down. And then flush with the bottom of the new tabletop will be T-nuts facing up, and then bolts through the equipment flanges into those. This is the long shank uh, T-nut and bolt that I have for mounting the two tabletops to the benches. Again, it's uh, two three-quarter inch pieces approximately. It's roughly an inch and a half. So with this uh, flange on the T-nut on one side, I've got uh, a bit less than an inch and a half if the bolt is all the way into the T-nut. 
and if I extend it out a little bit it'll go a bit more so that should be about the right length. We've also got some lock washers and so on to go with that. And this is the uh, one and an eighth bolt and it's T-nut that I've got to hold the new piece of equipment to the single three-quarter inch tabletop. It's five-eighths of an inch plus the three-quarters of an inch of the top piece of wood equals one and an eighth inch and actually it's a little bit more than three-quarters inch as this is slightly more than one and an eighth inch so again the bolt should be just about exactly the right length and after a run to the hardware store there's the longer bolt and so now on the top side of the table I put some counter sinks with a Forstner bit slightly oversized to account for the head of the T-nuts that I'm going to use to anchor this to the frame of the existing table. I just want to make sure that it doesn't rise up above it. And now I have to do the clearance hole for the shank there. And so now that's done. And the typical bit should go in there pretty well with clearance. You just have to drive it home. And so now the T-nuts are in for that. And here's the uh, bottom side of the table with the four countersunk holes for the T-nuts to secure the new machine. And there's the T-nuts pounded in. And now for the 3 8 T-nuts that are in here for the bench grinder. And now I've got a second coat of uh, varnish going on the top side and the edges, not bothering with a second coat on the bottom. And as usual I've got my oscillating fans keeping it warm. And meanwhile, I've prepared the through holes by opening them up to clearance size for the bolts that will come up from the bottom and uh, go into the T-nuts on the bottom of the new table. Alright, I've got the new tabletop bolted down to the old tabletop. using a lock washer and a flat washer going through the metal frame up through the original tabletop and into the T-nuts on the top they go about halfway up. I could have used the next longer screw but it would have protruded through and I would have had to cut it off so I thought this is better this way. And so here's the finished bench. I had to move the uh, tub with the larger pipe clamps or beam clamps. Um, used to have it up on top where the machine is now, but I moved it down to the bottom. It fits just fine. And the uh, other clips and straps all still go where they used to go. The grinder and wire brush is still in a good position. I did deviate a little bit from what I had. Originally I was going to go down from the top, but uh, it was almost impossible to get the screws through from that direction. It worked much better the way I did it the first time with the uh, old table, so I reverted to that. I knocked out the T-nuts and just put through the original bolts, sticking them through, and then uh, using a lock nut on the bottom, same ones I had before, so that's fine. And uh, everything's mounted up good. And uh, 
This is, as I mentioned before, a Bailey SBR1220. I think a similar one is sold by another brand or two. It has a set of rollers on the top. I haven't really used the machine yet. It needs to be set up yet. And then it has a, a bending brake down there. And of course the shear. So that little project is successful. So uh, here's a bit of an overview of the machine, which is a shear brake roller. It's a fairly minimal machine, but it still has, I think, most of the important features that I'm going to need for the, for the very light and infrequent use I would give it. Uh, it starts out with a shear down here to shear sheet metal, as the name would sound. And then right above it, it has a bending brake with removable keys, which allows you to uh, fold up box shapes. And then on the top is the, uh, the rollers, the slip rollers, for bending sheet metal into curved shapes. It's all operated by one lever, which can be reversible, to the other side, whichever side makes the most sense, and the lever can be like this, or it can be, by adjusting the screw, it can go all the way down to one end or the other to uh, provide for more leverage. The shear has a back plate. here which can be adjusted in and out it's not a real nice back plate it takes a bit of fiddling to uh, get it adjusted because the uh, the rods that pass through it which support it fit fairly tight tightly through the holes in these blocks and if you get it too far cattywampus it just binds up so you have to kind of use both hands and kind of finesse it along the rods but when you're using the shear uh, the workpiece comes out and hits this and that's your backstop if you're doing multiple things and you don't want to have to mark every piece you can for example set one up and then adjust the uh, back plate here to match it tighten it down, and then all the subsequent pieces you're cutting to the same dimension, you just push back until they hit this. Uh, it can be taken off and flipped upside down, in which case it acts as a back stop for the uh, bending brake. Although I think it's a lot less likely I would use it that way, so I've got it set up facing down. And this is the pressure plate here, which can be removed actually, either for access to the blade or if you just can't use it for some reason. So the shear action, it can accommodate up to about 1 16th inch thick material, although um, it can't do that with steel, it can do that with aluminum and it's right on the hairy edge of its rating for cutting sheet brass. Uh, cutting sheet metal is a bit less than that. I forget what it can do, maybe 18 gauge or something, uh, without potential damage or difficulty. Anyway, by turning the lever, it shears down, and it actually reciprocates, so if I keep turning the lever in the same direction, it comes back up. And that's because it's just on this eccentric cam mechanism here. Which, by the way, has Zerk fittings on it. <clears throat> uh, 
with the pressure plate installed. As soon as you come down, before the blade even engages, the pressure plate engages the workpiece, and then as you continue the blade down, it asserts more force against the workpiece to clamp it in place, and then does the shearing. And then finally releases it on the upstroke. There's a side stop here, which is sort of optional. And as far as adjusting the the fit of the blade or the engagement of the blade, there are these two large um, Allen head bolts here, which if you loosen those a little bit, then a screwdriver can turn these adjustments here and here, and that moves the whole table here in and out so as to best engage the blade and ideally it should have essentially zero clearance like this but if you um, <clears throat> take the blade off and get it sharpened you might have to adjust it in and maybe under certain other conditions you may have to back the whole thing out a little bit and these bolt heads can be finger adjusted to determine the distance from the uh, bed here uh, of the pressure plate when it's in the full-up position and ideally it's supposed to be set for about an eighth of an inch clearance when it's in the full-up position. These couple of bolts here can be adjusted to determine uh, how freely the uh, shear plate moves up and down but obviously it shouldn't have any wobble to it so it's factory adjusted and it seems to be appropriate at this point. Moving up we have the brake and the top part of the brake remains fixed, the part with the fingers and then the channel is the part that moves up and down with the machine. And it can make um, 90 degree bends and by removing different fingers which requires unclamping this uh, clamping plate or loosening this clamping plate you can remove the fingers and rearrange them in different patterns or leave some of them out uh, to allow for folding up the sides of boxes where otherwise it would hit some of these uh, keys so again it's sort of rudimentary and I haven't yet figured out the best way to replace these if you're trying to put them all back in so as to bend a 12 inch wide plate and this is a 12 inch wide machine as far as the work piece goes it's sort of a trick to get these all back in there you can't hold them all in place while tightening these down I'm sure there's a technique for that I haven't yet discovered so to test this uh, shear out I just got some uh, sheet tin of the sort that is intended for use in making heating duct this is just an all-around handy and inexpensive sheet metal I use for a lot of projects if I don't need it to be very stiff. So I put it up against the side. I move it back just a little bit here. And there's my cut pieces. Moving up to something that's probably about a, I don't know, it's probably a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch aluminum.
certainly cuts that easily enough. And finally I've got some 0 0.05 inch thick soft tempered brass sheet which would be about the maximum for this machine. That's about all I can do here. <laughs> well, I can't actually get it to cut it. It's just a little bit too much for this machine. So that is a demonstration of what the machine can't do. It's just uh, too much. Now I'm sure it could have cut it in a uh, a narrower piece, but trying to cut all the way through it like this was uh, simply too much for it. And as for the uh, bending brake, I lower it all the way down. Move the handle up to the other side. And this is a piece of 16th inch or uh, 16 gauge approximately. Uh, aluminum scrap that I've got here. So there it's got a nice 90 degree bend in it. And uh, here's some of that sheet tin. needed to hold that uh, and this uh, didn't bend it uh, completely 90 degrees it's a little bit short and I think the reason for that is that the material is so thin it didn't get pressed fully into the channel by the keys although the material this thin once the bend is started, it's just a simple matter to bend it by hand along the same line and now I've got a nice 90 degrees, so that's workable. So I actually read the manual here <laughs> and uh, the recommendation for how to adjust the, uh, the keys is to uh, So all the keys are out now, and it recommends uh, with the uh, bar lowered all the way down, its lowest level, to lay a thin strip of wood on here, like this. And uh, I had degreased this before, and uh, what I've been starting to use lately is this Bow Shield product, which is a waterproof lubrication rust and corrosion protection product originally designed by Boeing and now uh, sold by an uh, independent company that seems to make just variations on this product and they do recommend that uh, these work surfaces once degreased um, get a a treatment of the product
I'm using Q-tips to sop out the remaining product that got into the crevice down here. shouldn't have to do this too often. Alright, so with a piece of wood on here, I can take the now bow shield protected keys and slide them in like this and the piece of wood holds them up enough that they don't fall back out. This is turned to raise it until they don't go anymore. Oops. Somehow I managed to put in one of them upside down. finger today. Alright, so now we raise those up till they're firmly seated in there and then turn the screws to lock them in place. I don't go all the way down, it's just enough to keep them from wobbling at this point. And then I tension it up a little bit more to make their, sure they're firmly seated and snug these bolts down. So that is how that is supposed to be done. And now for checking out the rollers. For the slip rollers, there's the back roller and the lower front roller and the upper front roller, which I've currently got laid down here. The two front rollers are gear driven off their right side and they uh, engage each other so they both turn in opposing directions and they're driven by the same crank that drives all the other operations on the machine. The upper front roller can rise up and down in this slot. It has a pair of bearings on it like this. And that can be tightened or loosened by adjusting these screws.
this roller is the driven roller and it does not move up and down or forwards and backwards. The rear roller or the back roller can be adjusted up and down on these slots by using these knobs on the back. And that forces it up in this direction so it slides in this slot. And it can be adjusted at an angle if I'm doing angled work pieces. If I want to, in other words, make a spiral or not a spiral, but a cone shaped uh, bend in the sheet metal, I can adjust it so this rear roller has a bit of a cant one way or the other as it slides up and down. The front top roller can be removed as I have it here and the it goes in like that and then this side swings into place and by adjusting this little nut here this flange rolls into place like this locking the roller into place so it can't come out and then both rollers turn. There's a certain amount of slop in the upper one which can be taken out by adjusting down the two nuts here. The first adjustment in rolling is to try to stick the material to be rolled in between these. Okay, so I've got the edge of my sheet metal squared off here and going back to the rollers I'm supposed to adjust these until this workpiece just fits through it won't fit through there I back it off by about a quarter turn and it will just fit through. And I pick, put the piece in until it's about an inch or so beyond that. And I tighten these until the piece is held firmly. And I take it back I take this piece back through the top and bottom front rollers until the piece of material just contacts the top of the rear roller. And then I have to adjust the rear screws until it's just starting to bend the piece up there. It's a little hard to visualize so I'm just leaving the camera where it is. And it may not be obvious but the piece has a slight bend here. So now I go into it from the other side. And give it a pre-bend as well.
I'm new, new to this machine and I'm still forgetting which way to turn it to uh, get it to roll in the direction I want. Okay, I've managed to roll this piece. I didn't get the adjustments quite right, so it's slightly um, slightly curled to one side. So once the piece is rolled like this, these screws are turned all the way up. And this little piece here is turned sideways, allowing this whole roller to come out. And what I'm left with here is a rolled piece of sheet metal. So the machine basically works. I just need to acquire more skill with it, especially in the rolling department. And when the rollers are not being used, this cover comes down and uh, protects that area.